there and welcome to my channel, The Hodgepodge Life of Jessie. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hi, I am Jessie. I am Jessie from The Hodgepodge Life of Jessie. Thank you so much for watching. Tonight I'm going to be making my homemade Mongolian beef recipe, um, so let's get started. So for this recipe, you're going to want to get a thin cut steak. Uh, Walmart has this extra thin shaved ribeye steak meat that I love to use for this recipe. You're gonna need a bowl, you're gonna need some cornstarch, some sriracha, some brown sugar, you're gonna need a 1 fourth measuring cup, and you're gonna need a tablespoon. You're gonna need some ground ginger, or you can use fresh ginger. And then you're also gonna need um, minced garlic. I like to use this because it's just faster and easier for me. And you're also going to need a onion, which I haven't cut up yet. And then you're gonna need a measuring cup with half a cup of water in it and a whisk. To mention, you're gonna want some vegetable oil or whatever kind of oil that you have on hand. And then you also need a large skillet that you're gonna cook your Mongolian beef in. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take your bowl and you're going to put the 1 fourth cup of cornstarch in the bowl with your meat. Once you have the meat mixture with the cornstarch, you're gonna wanna turn your pan on. I'll probably turn it on about seven, so kind of like a medium, medium high. Um, and then you're gonna put your oil in your pan. Your pan, you're gonna wanna make sure that you add enough that the bottom is pretty coated because you are in essence frying up the meat. Okay, once you have your pan heated with your oil in it, um, then you're gonna add in the beef with the cornstarch. You might wanna do it in batches depending on how big your pan is. Drop it in there. I might be able to fit mine all in there. Might be a little overcrowded, but we'll make it work. forgot another ingredient which is soy sauce i will have the recipe down in the description for you guys bear with me i'm just starting to do videos so this is all kind of new to me and i'll also be getting a tripod here in a week or so so my videos will be a little bit better quality then because then i'll have something to hold up my camera while i'm doing stuff so he is getting ready to be flipped so we're gonna pay attention to that real quick and see you're gonna kind of fold it over and you can kind of see it starting to get that nice crust and on there and that's what you want to see you want to see that nice crispy crust it's gonna be really delicious be careful if you're using like a metal tongs in a pan like this because you don't want to scratch the teflon coating because that won't be good for your pan at all so i need to get um a silicone one but i just haven't had the chance to do that yet so We'll just be really careful and gentle. Make sure we're not doing that. Situated, we're gonna go on to the sauce. So like I said, in here I have a half a cup of water and then you're gonna add a half a cup of soy sauce to that. Seems like a lot because soy sauce is pretty salty, but I get the low sodium, so then that's not an issue. And then you're gonna want to add in a tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm gonna add that in. You don't want it to burn. So you're gonna go back and keep flipping the pieces around. Make sure we get them cooked all the way through. Back 
to the sauce again and we're gonna add just a little bit of the ground ginger. Just a little bit, like probably like half a teaspoon. And then we're gonna add the sriracha. For measuring sake, I usually just squirt some in, but for the video, I want out a tablespoon. You can do what you like. If you don't like spicy stuff, don't add it. It's not a big deal. Um, let's add that in. And then you're gonna wanna add in some garlic. I would say if you're dicing it yourself and mincing it, I would do like it's maybe one clove. I'm probably putting in like one and a half cloves worth or just like two decent sized squeezes. And you're gonna take that and you're gonna whisk it up. If you don't have sriracha, you can also use like red pepper flake. I've used that before and it's turned out really good. Or even the, um, it's the garlic sriracha like paste stuff. That's really good in there too. And make sure that we're getting all of it turned and all of it crisp. Look at that frost on that. That is gonna be so good. Be careful when you're doing this because the oil, or you're working with oil and obviously it'll splatter and you don't want to get burnt. You can see all the beef is nice and crisped up. The pink is all gone. So then we're going to take it and we're going to put it into a bowl. And you're going to leave your oil in your pan because next we are going to be uh, sauteing up our onions. If you don't like onions, you don't have to put it in the recipe. We just like them and I feel like it adds extra goodness to the recipe, so that's why we do it. If you wanted to make this dish a little bit more healthier, you could just spray the pan with um, some pan spray and not use the cornstarch on the meat and then you're not frying it up. It won't be as crunchy, but the flavor will still be really good. Um, we're going to be doing rice as a side, so if you wanted to do something a little bit healthier, you could always do like cauliflower rice. That's always a really good option as well. I cut the onion in half and then I cut the onion into slices like this. It's a really nice thickness, goes perfect, oops, perfect with the, the beef, so you can add those to your pan. Be careful, it's going to splatter. And then you're going to want to saute those up until they kind of get some color and they start getting a little translucent. In the pan and you just want to take your spoon and kind of break them up a little bit because they're stuck together. You can do it before you get them in the pan, probably easier, but I'm doing all this one handed because like I said, I don't have a, a tripod for my camera yet. So we're working with what we have, you know, it's your kitchen, make what works for you work, you know. So I like to add some salt to my beef after it cooks. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I just like to add a little bit of more flavor to it. There is a lot of salt with the soy sauce and all of that, but you know, it's up to your taste and what you like to do. And I always like to add a little bit to the beef. We're gonna wanna start our water. I have two cups of water that I need to get going for the rice. And then I'm also going to be making some egg rolls to go with this meal, so I need to get those on the pizzazz. What we're doing with dinner tonight are the pagoda pork egg rolls, and then this is our pizzazz. It is well loved. We've had it for seven, eight years now, um, and I'm going to get those on the pizzazz, and we've had the pizzazz for a long time, like I said. So I got the egg rolls on there, and it works the same, I'm like an air fryer kind of. So. We're gonna get that going. I'm gonna put it on for 20 minutes. It probably won't need that long, but that's what I'm gonna set it for. And here you can see they're starting to get some nice caramelization and they already kind of got a little translucent. That's what we wanna see. I'm gonna get a little bit more color on these because I love that caramelization. It is so good in this meal. And once the onions are cooked to the color that I like, we're gonna add the beef back in. And then we're gonna add the sauce. Um, I suggest waiting till it's almost ready to serve up to add the sauce in because the sauce will make the beef not as crispy. So you wanna make sure that you're getting that 
on closer to when you're going to be serving it. You know, you want them to cook down to the consistency that you want. And we really like our caramelized. So it takes a little bit more time to get that kind of to, to happen, but it's worth it to sit and wait for it to happen. So about your beef and it getting cold because you're going to add it back to the pan, reheat it up a little bit, and then we're going to add the sauce. Boiling, we are going to be using the white rice, the instant from Great Value. I use three cups of water, so you need to use um, three cups of rice, which I have in here. We'll add that to there. And then you're supposed to turn your pan off, stir your rice. And then you're gonna cover up. I have old pans and so I don't have a lid for it. So we improvise and we use some tin foil. And then I just take a towel so I don't burn myself to push it down onto the pan. Works the same as a cover. You gotta MacGyver it sometimes, at least in my kitchen I do. And then you wanna take that off the heat and you're gonna set a timer. You're gonna want it to sit for five minutes. So I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. And then my onions are looking perfect. Look how gorgeous those look. If I could have you guys smell what this smells like, it oh, is seriously so good. So at this point, we're going to add our beef back in. And then you're going to mix the two together. It might have clumped up a little bit, but that's okay. Just use your spoon. Break up the pieces a little bit. Sure. Oh my goodness, guys. Does this not already look so delicious? Oh my. And then we're going to add our sauce. We have it all whisked up. You might want to re-whisk it if it's been sitting for a while. And you're going to pour it into the pan. And then you're going to want this to come up to a boil because remember we have the cornstarch in there and you want that cornstarch to heat up so it'll thicken up. Once you get it to a boil, let it boil for a minute and then you're going to turn it down to low. And when it starts to kind of come down from that high heat, it'll really thicken up. So we're gonna let it kind of start to go. Oh my guys, look at this. It already looks glorious. I wish you guys could smell it. it smells delicious. It's gonna be a great dinner. It came to a boil. We're gonna turn it on low to thicken and that's what you wanna see. I turn my heat down to low. We're gonna let it sit here for a few minutes and I'll thicken up even more and I'll be right back. This, the sauce has thickened. It is perfect right where we want it. So we're gonna turn the heat off and then we're gonna uh, plate our dish. All right guys, the rice is finally done. So we can take the lid off. Look how fluffy that got. It's perfect. And we're just mix it up. All right, we're gonna put some on our plate. nice and steamy and then we're gonna add this beautiful Mongolian beef to it all right guys there it is a finished product the yummy Mongolian beef nice and crispy the egg roll the rice it's gonna be an awesome dinner tonight all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching me make my Mongolian beef. I hope you try the recipe. If you do, please let me know and comment down below what you guys made for dinner. I'd love to find out what you guys make at home as well. Maybe share me your recipes. I would love to hear. Um, please like and subscribe my video, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.